What's happening y'all? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another album review. It's time to talk about the long-awaited sixth studio album by Massachusetts Metalcore Maniacs, Ice Nine Kills. This one is called The Silver Scream 2, Welcome to Horrorwood. Obviously, as the title suggests, the follow-up and sequel to 2018's The Silver Scream. One of my top three favorite albums of all time. So, as a big fan, they do have some lofty expectations to live up to, and there's a as we get into this, there's an interesting dichotomy that I want to point out. Some of the singles presented, for me at least, no indication of what the whole album would sound like, and I'll be honest, two of the singles, uh, Rainy Day and Assault and Batteries, I honestly did not vibe with as much as some of their previous work. I thought that... Those were just two, only two examples where the band sort of dabbles into a slightly more derivative uh, sort of approach. Though the rest of the album is fucking killer, y'all. Breakdown after breakdown after breakdown. I mean, and once again, in the same vein as their previous two albums, the band showing their unique uh, variety of skill sets. I mean, the title track, Welcome to Horrorwood, that has a bit of like Dragon Force sort of like power metal going on. I mean, um, and of course, coupling that with the band's original presentation, um, our rash decision, I think is one of the best songs they've ever done. A perfect exemplar of marrying like the, the punishing in a uh, heavy metal sound palette and instrumentals with a sort of glossy or hard rock edge and Spencer's voice. Uh, he's just an amazing singer. And I think his voice is the perfect match for this band, helping to secure a contemporary identity for the group. And his voice shines everywhere. I mean, and he really does a great job slipping into the role of some of the characters. Um, and like not only singing from their perspectives in each particular song, but I mean, he just, I mean, in particular, I want to talk about the shower scene, which is based off Psycho, a work that they've been, they should have touched a long time ago. But when we get to the end of that song, uh, and he's like, can I help you, sir? <laughs> Spencer, Spencer is just too much sometimes. I mean, the, getting back to what I was saying, though. So whereas some of those lead-off singles, and even one of my friends who's a big Ink fan, was not too privy on the lead-off single, Hip to be Scared. Um... While some of those lead-off singles did leave me a bit uneasy that maybe they were going to go down strictly the path that some of their radio singles, like A Grave Mistake, which was a top 10 radio hit, and Savages, like maybe the more like silly derivative uh, direction. Now, I love those songs personally, but if you wanted to make the argument that the, some of those radio singles were sort of dabbling into a more derivative direction, I, you could be forgiven for making that assertion. I wouldn't, I wouldn't fight you too much. But thankfully, the rest of the album doesn't do that when you look at Fly, The Box, uh, Farewell to Flash. I mean, there's punishing breakdowns. I mean, and and, they're, and the musicality touches based on a variety of genres, deathcore, melodic death metal. I mean, these guys do it all. <laughs> it, it cannot be overstated. And the production, the mastering is just so good. They brought back uh, Drew Folk. I mean, it's top notch. I think they're the best band in heavy metal going today. And they prove so once again. <laughs> I mean, there's... I mean, and I'll take it a step further. I feel like some of the slightly more popular moments where, like, synths and bass lines become a bit more prominent, you could even make the argument that they're, they sound a little bit similar to Motionless and White. Though, of course, Ice Nine Kills does, like, the spooky Halloween aesthetic far better, far more superior than Motionless ever could. Um, and again, just an original original presentation. I mean, they, they've really leaned into the horror uh, sort of aesthetic. I mean... Obviously, looking at every trick in the book in the Silver Scream, seeing what worked, I mean, it makes sense to keep going down that path. But, I mean, I was I was afraid they might be pigeonholing themselves and pr prolonging any inevitable uh, senescence in terms of their sound. But, I mean, they know what works and they pull it off. I mean, it's too early to tell if this will really stack up long term to their previous two albums, which I hold in extremely high regard. Both are in my top ten, and as I said, Silver Scream is in my top three. It'll be... it's. Only time will tell if this will really hold up and match those two. Um, but just off my immediate first impressions, they definitely pull it off. I'm going to give Silver Scream 2 Welcome to Horrorwood a 4.5 out of 5 for now. Leave a comment below and we'll discuss the album more in detail when I can actually type shit out. So thank you for watching. Just want to get this one out of the way real quick. Thanks for watching again. If you enjoyed, smack the like button, leave a comment, subscribe, hit the bell. See you later.